Bang, bang into the room. I know you want it. Bang, bang all over you in your face. Because this is Striker of Enyo, and this is episode 200 Spectacular. I, I can't roll my R's. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm deficient. I'm white. So, <laughs> so this is the big 200 episode, and this is uh, a lot of black screen. No, this is the top 15 franchises that need a reboot. And, well, if you know me, you know I work on Xbox One and using Upload Studio, so I'm a little bit limited to, obviously, the game, the kind of game footage that I can capture, which basically means no PlayStation stuff. It's, it's just my limitations, so you guys should know it up front. This is pretty much anything that can show up on Xbox One, whether backwards compatible. That's where this list kind of comes from. I got a good mixture of games, so I don't think we're too worried about it. And if you know me, well then you know I'm limited to stuff what's on Xbox One, but just so that you know this up ahead of time, and that's why you don't see your favorite PlayStation franchise in there, or maybe something from the Dreamcast era, or so on. But, uh, but yeah, this is all about those games that have been on for so many years that they have a convoluted plot or a cast of characters that have become way too big over the years and someone just needs to reboot that franchise because nobody can keep track or nobody remembers where these characters came from to begin with. This is all about those pre-existing plot elements or game mechanics that really aren't worth preserving because... Well, I mean, seriously, who cares? Why do we still have tank controls, you know? Ten games into this franchise, like, let's reboot everything. Or maybe it's been so long since a sequel came out that they might as well just start from the beginning. And you might be wondering, well, what about the bird and bear? Well, we know about ukulele coming out, so they kind of escaped this list for the moment, because we know there's something coming out, but believe us, we probably would have put it on there because we really want to have a Banjo 3E. But uh, we do have a few rules, though. There needs to at least be two games in order for it to be considered a series. Must have a continuation of a single game world or story or characters. So this kind of doesn't include like Final Fantasy or Grand Theft Auto, where yeah, sometimes the world might be a continuation, but not necessarily always and sometimes the characters are usually completely new anyway and it's all new game mechanics so some of those franchises aren't necessarily considered well what about the ones that have already been rebooted well that's the third one cannot have been rebooted already or at least not recently so like when it comes to Deus Ex or Tomb Raider they actually have already had two titles in their reboot or since they were rebooted like you had Tomb Raider and then Rise of the Tomb Raider so technically we could say that we want to reboot Tomb Raider again, or even Deus Ex, because both of those games already have had a sequel after the reboot, so that's kind of how we're doing it. But yeah, here's the top 15 video game franchises that need a reboot. Why 15? Because I at least got to do four more than the Nostalgia Critic in order to keep up. So yeah, let's get this thing going. Number 15. The first one. I mean, the 15th. So, Alan Wake. I almost feel kind of bad putting Alan Wake on my list, but uh, but then again, here it is. Um, Alan Wake by no means is a bad game. It actually is a quite great game. The dialogue might seem to be a little stilted nowadays, um, which is kind of weird because it really is put well together, and Remedy is known for, for crafting great worlds, and they have officially said that... Uh, they have put this game franchise on the back burner, so they are listening to their fans, and they want to create another Alan Wake. I'm just not sure if creating a sequel is going to be the right answer. Now, they also came out with an arcade game called uh, Alan Wake American Nightmare, or something along those lines. Uh, it was a five-hour little adventure, which was kind of a continuation of what we see in the game, not necessarily a sequel. And there also was two DLC for the game as well, but... Uh, you know what, I've never... It's been so hard for me to actually pick this game up and play it, and I've heard that, like... The DLC is the true sequel to the game, or it's the true 
ending to the game, so I don't know how many people are going to pick up Alan Wake. I know it's backwards compatible on Xbox One, so you can easily just buy it and download it and play it, but I don't know. I don't know how many people are really going to be able to get into it. I think what we need is we kind of need a reboot of Alan Wake, or we need the next game to really just be a great Alan Wake story instead of a great Alan Wake sequel. So, uh, that's kind of my thoughts. Like I said, I really love the game, but I don't know if people want to put up with it. Number 14. In your face. Operation Flashpoint. Now, that's a game series that actually has a much bigger pedigree on PC. And trust me, if you've seen video of it, it looks actually pretty cool. There's a lot of... Uh, fan-made uh, elements and vehicles and uh, there's a lot of content out there and it's well known for its uh, server size uh, enemy engagements and whatnot but on the console well we got Dragon Rising which um, is kind of okay uh, it's hard to get into it's a realistic military simulation along the lines of Arma 3 we did get a sequel called uh, Operation Flashpoint Red River, but when it came out, it got a lot of fives and sixes, and man, I was really disillusioned with the franchise at that point. I really want this thing to succeed. I really want it to be pretty cool, you know, with the uh, a new generation of consoles. Maybe this thing could actually be something, you know, pretty unique and pretty, pretty awesome, but uh, I don't know. Maybe PC is just better made for the simulation type stuff. Maybe nobody wants to port there their hardcore military sims to uh, to a console so uh, yeah but I really I don't want to see any kind of continuation of of these characters or the story involved so I really thought a reboot would be the best way of doing it you know not just have a new game in the series so I loved it though number 13 Rainbow Six. Damn, these were some fun games back in the day. Uh, Ubisoft was on top of the multiplayer heat, man. Rainbow Six Vegas 1 and 2, those were the games that were getting played so much. They were so much fun. And then Call of Duty came around and basically raped everything that we loved. It was kind of a shame that Ubisoft didn't follow up with the proper Rainbow Six sequel for, like, what was it, seven years? Possibly even a little bit more? We didn't even hear about another game for six years. But, uh, yeah, I mean, what we're looking for here is, uh, you know, I really want to have a proper, you know, 14 or 16 player, you know, Rainbow Six. You know, tons of weapons, weapon customization, you know, scopes, uh, sights, lasers... Uh, body armor, different pieces of body armor, uh, gadgets, you know, you name it. I want all that kind of stuff. You know, none of this, you know, single player with, uh, you know, a limited set of stuff. I want to be able to customize a character and create it and color it and optimize it to the best of my ability. And, uh, and yeah, you know, me and my friends, we really want to have these, those 14 player and the 16 player matches. You know, like before. I mean, we played these games were so much fun, man. If you if you never got a chance to play them, it's hard to go back because they look very simple. But you know, me and my friends, we had these maps memorized. I mean, if you gave me a sheet of paper and told me, you know, well, maybe not the dam, but to to draw some of these maps, uh, you'd probably be pretty surprised that I'd remember a lot of small little crates and individual barrels and uh, and ledges and whatnot. And that's because you know, I've I've literally have taken cover behind those things probably 60 to 70 times in my lifetime so I, I got them pretty well memorized we, we absolutely love these things rainbow six siege is is a hard sell my friends won't play it because you know it's it's limited to like five on five and it doesn't have respawns you know so hey bring back rainbow six give us 16 players and let us decide if we want to respawn or not number 12 yeah so, Gears of War, and you might be thinking, well, they already did one, Striker. it's the Ultimate Edition. Well, that wasn't a reboot. I'm talking about, let's change things up, alright? You know, Marcus has had his day. 
the world of Sarah never really quite worked for me, and I've never really been able to get that invested in the story of Gears because it's not been that good. Uh, the first one was pretty much, you know, hey, military team, you need to go here. Oh, now we got this complication. Oh, my God. Uh, Gears is, is all about gameplay. Don't get me wrong. It's 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 great. It's fascinating. It's pulse-pounding, What you know, whatever you want to stick in there. hi -oh. No, I mean, <laughs> so it's... <laughs> It's a great game, it's got great gameplay, but the story has never been that great. I mean, number two focused on Dom with the one story of his wife, and that was about it. Otherwise, it's always been just military jargon. We need to move our troops, we need to get through here, we need to take this thing out. But I guess there's nothing wrong with that, and I guess maybe that's just the way Gears is, but quite honestly, <laughs> I don't understand why they don't have a buttstock on the rifle. I mean... They're basically firing a really long submachine gun. There's no way to brace your shots because it's, you know, it's not real. Now, granted, they have dialed back some of the silliness, like the big combat armor and not anymore. And changed. Uh, well, these guys are huge. I mean, seriously, each one of these guys should weigh like about 300 pounds, right? I mean, their forearms are bigger than their. Is that? I should say they're. Their biceps are bigger than their head, or they're about the same size. So, yeah, I think I think a redesign of Gears. It doesn't need to be necessarily more realistic, but you know what? Put it on Earth. I've, Like I said, I've never been able to really engage because they're always worried about their planet getting destroyed, and, you know, the locusts have been here too, and it's like, well, why, why not make that Earth? Why couldn't you have a cavern that are full of locusts? Make us fight you know, for the home world of the humans, as far as we know it. This is just the planet called Sarah, right? I mean, it's it's nothing. Who cares if it gets blown up? There's probably another one, so... You know, that's the kind of thing. If it was Earth and we were actually harming Earth, that'd be something different. Uh, but as far as we know, there's not even spaceship travel in this world. So, you know, these guys are regulated to the place, but... So, yeah, I think I think Gears could... Uh, it could use a reboot, maybe. Um, Story-wise, the gameplay is always great. But, yeah, I think... Uh, it, could, it could use a little work. Number 11. In close. Battletoads. That's right. Back in what was 91 is when Rare brought this to the NES. You're looking at the uh, 94 arcade game. Uh, Battletoads is often described as being overrated. And uh, I, I kind of agree with that because ultimately it's not. If it was just a straight beat em up all the way through, it probably could have garnered even a bigger cult following, but they had to do a lot of really hard gameplay to get through. And I guess that's what some people like. Um, but I really think Rare kind of missed the boat uh, back in the day. And they, they did try to do some more Battle Toads around 94. Uh, and honestly, their their whole structure of the way they did games is a lot different uh, going into the mid-90s. I mean, at first, they, they literally were pumping out, I mean, lots and lots of games. You know, they were a pretty big third-party publisher putting their stuff on a lot of different... Uh, a lot of different places, and uh, and at, at a certain point, they started to kind of focus more on the quality of single titles, and that's kind of where we got Donkey Kong Country from and whatnot. And eventually, you know, that's what uh, enticed uh, them to make stuff for Rare. Or, I mean, make stuff for Nintendo, but uh, and eventually they did make their own stuff as well. But uh, but yeah, Battletoads, I think they just need to kind of restart it. Um, you know, try again, but, you know, maybe put some of those aspect of the Ninja Turtles in there, but, you know, make it a parody of essentially a parody, since Ninja Turtles is kind of a parody of another comic. So, but yeah, I think I think it could work. Uh, you know, they tried Battletoads Arcade, they tried to do uh, Double Dragons and Battletoads, or Battletoads and Double Dragon, e either way. But I really would mind seeing a, kind of a revisit, and, you know, a little bit more depth and whatnot, and speeder bikes, I don't know, I I don't, you can put them in there, but, uh, you know, maybe they shouldn't be so hard this time, I don't know, I, th I, th I think there's potential, um, you know, make it an arcade game, you know, maybe kind of like this again, 
you know, make it two player, make it awesome, kind of like Double Dragon Neo. And uh, you know what? It could find its own following, and who knows? Maybe make it into a 3D. But yeah, Battletoads definitely needs to be rebo rebooted. And take out some of that hard as nails stuff. Number 10. So, Castlevania is in my number 10 spot. Uh, it probably would be higher and uh, held in more regard if Konami wasn't being Konami right now. Uh, you know, the Konami that doesn't care about you and wants to make pachinko machines out of all of its hot properties. So, you know, some of the earliest games in Castlevania borrowed source material from motifs in iconic horror cinema and other monsters from Universal Horror and the Hammer era of films. You know, like werewolves and Frankenstein's monster and the mummy, Medusa, the Grim Reaper, uh, you know, obviously Dracula and whatnot. You know, the earlier games paid homage to these films. And as they went on, they started to include, uh, you know, the monsters and whatnot from different... Uh, different historical times, you know, and, in this world. and different uh, different cultures, you know, even throughout the world to some degree. So it's it's always been kind of interesting and fascinating. But but I mean, we started with the Belmonts, and then we kind of went away from that, and we were other characters for the longest time. And eventually, they brought us back to the Belmonts, like in this game here. In Symphony of Night, but you know we're, we're talking about forty some games of content. Um, you know the 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 last couple of games, the uh, Lords of Shadow. You know, tried to make things a bit different. Um, and I don't know how well that really turned out, but I really think I think Castlevania needs to kind of start over again. You know, to have a vision, uh, maybe even a single vision from. From somebody new, and uh, you know, he can put Dracula in there, he can make it a hundred years, he can make it a thousand years. You know, the Dracula shows up on rotation, but just I think we need something different, you know. And and uh, if we had someone that, that has a new vision for Dracula, you know, we can we can take him down in the first game, and then we can like be building up toward him in a prequel, and then in a sequel, we can like finally bring him back, but it's it's a different family member, you know, there, there, there can be so much done with it, and it's it's been kind of a mess to include everything into one timeline, you know, from Konami's standpoint. So I really think uh, rebooting Castlevania, whether it's, it's back to the sprite-based stuff like you're seeing now, or whether we go back into 3D, or whether we just have a new timeline, you know, completely, and, and we can have games both 3D and 2D. In it, I think that would be the best thing for Castlevania. Number nine. Oh, this one hurts. This one really hurts. Fable, Fable was one of my favorite series at a certain point. I really liked the concept. I really liked, you know, the uh, the English humor. And whatnot, uh, you know, John Cleese being the butler. I, I still like that. I like the idea of it, even if the whole menu and execution for Fable Three in general, and just the visuals looked awful. You know, back in the day, you know, very low res textures, um, surprisingly so, almost like the developer team was kind of stuck back in the mindset of the original Xbox. I mean, you know, not that some stuff doesn't look good, but yeah, just just the whole thought process. And quite honestly, I don't know if this is something that could happen. Ultimately, if we do get another Fable, it would be kind of a reboot, probably. You know, there is no lore or history necessarily of Fable, I guess you could argue. But still, it's my list, and in this case, I really do want to see Fable come back, you know? I want them to see them put a story forward that, you know, may, we might be able to even follow, um, you know, from game to game. Obviously, they keep advancing, uh, you know, in years, you know, what originally was uh, basically a fantasy action RPG into something that's a little, little more steampunk, mostly because of the ad addition of guns. 
but uh, I really think that you know some some other creative person out there could could possibly bring Fable back to uh, to the masses. Like, how about the guy that brought out Kingdoms of Amalur? Like, that fighting system was well beyond anything that Fable ever tried with Peter Molyneux, and that's kind of where we're stuck because Microsoft owns the property now, so. You know, it's it's not going to be the same development team that works on the next one. Peter Molyneux has, you know, long departed Lionhead Studios and formed another development team that's working on even smaller games. And I'm not saying that, you know, Peter has to be the one to bring back the series. But, you know, it, it needs a different, you know, figurehead, essentially. So, are we going to get it? I don't know, but it really would be cool to see this series done justice. Number eight. Eight. So, Kane and Lynch really was one of my more favorite games. The, the original one, not Dog Days. Dog Days was a piece of dog crap. But Kane and Lynch, I kind of liked, you know, the, the cinematics... It looked like they had modeled them after, like, real people. I really liked, you know, the whole aspect of of Lynch. And, and Kane didn't necessarily have too much of a personality, but that was who the player was. So you could kind of substitute, you know, your own feelings. And it was really more about watching what Lynch was going to do because he was the crazy one. And that was a cool concept in the first one, not to mention knocking over banks and some of the cool right, stuff that, you know, ultimately we see later, okay, like see in Payday Bye. series, and also like in GTA, um, especially number five. In Grand Theft Auto V is kind of where you start to see heists and whatnot. And this kind of started it. I didn't like the, uh, the change, you know, halfway through almost the first game where it kind of turned into Freedom Fighters, another game which the team was also responsible for. It was kind of a sudden shift. I mean, you were knocking over banks and having fights in the street, and then now you were part of a militia and you could order like a set number of, of gorillas, you know, in a uh, a jungle like, you know, Peru or, you know, a different country. And it was like, that was just, it was weird. I kind of liked the bank heights and whatnot. And, there's definitely a little bit of a style to Kane and Lynch too, but you know now we're playing as Lynch, and 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 ultimately that that wasn't what we wanted. We we liked seeing what Lynch would do. You know, we we want to see him, you know, gouging out somebody's eyeballs or something. But when the player is that guy, we can't do that. We can't enjoy watching him. So it was a huge misstep for this game. Uh, the multiplayer was interesting, you know, where you could betray, but quite honestly, a lot of times when I would play it, people would just betray you right from the start. They would drop a grenade, or they would start shooting right from the very start, and they wouldn't really quite get the concept. I think if you would remake this or reboot it, um, you know, I, I, I really don't mind the, uh, the voice actors that did the original voices. Um, I think you could craft a pretty a pretty dark and noir type story with them and I think I think it would work pretty well uh, just let's not go to Shanghai for the entire uh, you know game next time number seven oh yeah fantasy star and with that kind of fantasy star online so you might be thinking well you mean the Dreamcast, right? And well, I guess so, but you gotta remember there actually was another Fantasy Star Online that came out on Xbox 360, and I believe it was also PlayStation 3. And you know what? I played that. I played through the... Did I? I played through the game itself, and it had a lot of, of interesting mechanics. Yeah, I got my full 1,000 gamer score on it. And then they had a... They had kind of a rotating month, free month of being able to play online where all your character statistics were reset after that. And um, it was different. I mean, it was Fantasy Star Online and they were back. But they had a lot of convoluted concepts and whatnot. 
or convoluted mechanics, and I suppose that's what you need in an MMO, but you had to like, you had to create circuit boards in order for you to create, you know, weapons and whatnot, but you had to have the right stuff and everything, you know, was leveled and man that thing was it, it was really technical and, and kind of a mess it was fun to play though it was fun to see other players around and um it was it, it was really cool to kind of get into it and i played that you know for about a month because you know even if you paid full price for the game you didn't get an online pass whatsoever you didn't get a free month of being able to play online so a lot of us were playing you know the the no, not really a beta but you know the online free version you know for those 30 days and then when your character would get reset i mean you either stopped playing or you tried to level up even faster that second time and get more experience but quite honestly it was it was probably a good rendition of what fantasy star online version one and two were on the dreamcast but I'm more talking about, you know, like a proper Fantasy Star. I mean, we got Fantasy Star, you know, on the original Master System, it's been so long. You know, and then we got Fantasy Star 2, 3, and and uh, and 4, you know, Generations of Doom, I think. Was that the last one? And uh, we, we had a... Th and we just haven't had much from Fantasy Star, and I really would like to see the series come back. I mean... It literally can do whatever it wants. It could be anything it wants. It doesn't have to follow suit with anything or or retain, you know, characters. But I think I think a new fantasy star would be kind of cool. And if it happens to be online, yeah, that's I could take it or leave it. Number six. Woo! So Bionic Commando is uh, it's one of my favorite games. Um. You know, you can say that the original mechanic is broken, or it's brilliant, or it's genius. I always have still liked it. And when Bionic Commando Rearmed came out in 2008, which ended up being a remake of the original NES game, with some added stuff, because they were hopefully wanting to pay that kind of added uh, content into a proper big budget AAA game. That was gonna that was being developed by Grin Studios, still published by Capcom, and uh, I mean this was great. It was awesome to get a sequel to, to freaking Bionic Commando and get it you know rebooted right. But then we played the game that came out in 2009, uh, and you know what? It was really it was really mishandled. The story was absolute garbage. The game mechanics were broken to the point where you wondered where these people were thinking up. I mean, when you would get a collectible, if you died just before you left that particular area or you completed that particular segment, you would have to get that collectible again and again if you kept on dying at the end. And the same thing with challenges. If you had weapon challenges that you were completing on your way, if you died before you were able to properly leave the area or, you know, move on to the next section, you would have to do them all over again. Even if you already got the achievements for it, you still had to do it all over again and get all the collectibles every single time. And this is if you died right before you got out. It was a horrible piece of game design. Why couldn't they just save automatically like other games? And, um, I mean, it was cool that they were the sprites from the original game, but... And then there was the radiation areas, where if you started swinging in the wrong direction, you ran into radiation, which is basically your invisible wall, and you would be dead so friggin' fast. And sometimes it didn't make sense. This radiation stuff was everywhere. They really hindered where you could go. You really didn't have very expansive levels or much of a, a path that you could really choose. Yeah, it was just... And don't even get me started about the story. I mean, Super Joe is there, but he's voiced by Stephen Bloom, who does it. I like the character, but I, I always thought Super Joe should really sound like somebody else. You know, he, he should be a different actor, not the same guy that's done Wolverine a dozen times. And, and don't even get me started on the fact that apparently your dead wife is fused with your bionic arm. What the F? Seriously? Let's, let's move on to part number two.